What makes a diet healthy? What's the healthiest diet? These are the questions I literally typed into Google six years ago now, trying to optimize my health. So most people would agree that, I mean, and I guess think that don't eat any junk food and eat fruits and veggies, right? Well, conventional wisdom and preconceived notions are things we have to remove before answering this question. Preconceived notions such as saturated fat and cholesterol being bad for you, um, uh, veggies and fruits being good for you, we can't just assume those things because if we do, we're going to be incorrect in a lot of ways. We need to understand that there are various metabolic processes that occur in the body according to certain vitamins and inflammation and things that when those preconceived notions are assumed, it becomes incorrect. In the case of foods that are bad for us, most people would say that, oh, well, don't eat junk food, don't eat sugar, don't eat refined crap, and that seems to be conventional wisdom, general culture, what Americans accept. But they also don't know that beta carotene can be labeled as vitamin A, which is not true. Beta carotene needs to be converted with fat. They don't know that yogurt has the fat removed and all the vitamins removed to be replaced with sugar. They don't know that there are various seed oils such as soybean oil, corn oil. They literally think these oxidized laboratory experiment oils are healthy for them when they're actually the primary cause for heart disease. They don't know that there's various anti-nutrients, oxalates, phytic acid, lectin, so many negative things in modern grains, legumes, just vegetables, fruits. There's so many negative things in these foods that people don't know about. So how can they remove foods from their diet if they don't know what to remove? Well, the zero carb carnivore diet removes all plant foods and oddly enough, it achieves that without getting complicated. Now, yeah, you could go in and try to analyze every single food individually, whether or not we need to consume the heirloom, the, the old version, the version that our ancestors ate, or if it's fine to eat, you know, that leg work and all of that grunt work takes years of research and experience to understand those foods individually. So let's say we've removed all those foods, all those inflammatory foods from our diet through the zero carb carnivore mindset. Now, what's a nutrient dense food? What constitutes nutrient density? I guess we can't have any of those negative aspects, right? And although that would say that plant foods are nutrient dense, most people would argue against that. Most people would say, well, broccoli has vitamin C 10 times more than meat. And just because it says something is in it does not necessarily mean that the paper value of the food is what's going to be biologically available and digested in your body. The case of beta carotene being converted into retinoic acid, for example, well, that requires fat to be metabolized, but fat would not have existed in nature in all parts of the world outside of the context of animals, and animals always have retinoic acid. So there's kind of like a fallacy with converting beta carotene to vitamin A through use of unnatural foods. The example of uh, vitamin K2 being only present in animal foods, uh, omega-3 fatty acids. I mean, I don't want to go into those vitamins too much yet. What we just want to assume is that what constitutes nutrient density is high quality animal foods, very high in vitamins, minerals, elements, omega-3s, things that are imperative to our health and that everything in nature requires those vitamins, minerals, trees, lions, whatever animal, physical thing in nature, they require those vitamins to grow and flourish. And if we can understand that plants don't have those vitamins that humans can digest and that animal foods only have those vitamins, then we can explore, okay, why are these vitamins important and what do they actually do in the body? So in the example of vitamin A, retinoic acid. Cell differentiation is the process by which your body produces certain cells, whether it's a blood cell or a white blood cell or whatever it may be, uh, cells to heal the epidermis. Every cell in the body is made through cell differentiation, which is regulated by gene expression. And gene expression takes outside feedback. You get a cut, you get sick, uh, someone hits you in the head. Gene expression regulates through outside input. You start breathing brake fumes every day or smoking it tells your body what cells to make. And gene expression requires retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is the precursor to gene expression. So in the example of this very important vitamin that we would have only been able to get in the context of animal foods in nature, retinoic acid is essentially the building block of life in all of our cells. And that's why, you know, foods like liver, and I talk about cod liver oil a lot. You know, when I get sick, I eat a lot of liver. I only have mild symptoms. 
you know, liver heals my skin because of its retinoic acid content. I could, I used to have bad cystic acne that would take weeks or months for the blemishes to go away, and they literally go away within days on a high vitamin A diet. So it's very noticeable that our diets are deficient in these vitamins, and the importance of each of them individually is way too big to be discussed in a short video. So. I mean, I could go into omega-3 functions of the circulatory system and how you know, they make the platelets less sticky, they make them more flexible, the blood flows freer. You know, Eskimos take like eight to nine minutes for a wound to heal, whereas like Americans, I think it's like five or six minutes. So having that free flowing blood is more important for circulatory health. I could talk about how iron is required for blood health as well. I could talk about how vitamin K2 is required to metabolize calcium in the bones, how vitamin D3 is intertwined in all those processes, but all these vitamins, minerals, elements from vitamin D3 to uh, vitamin K2 to iodine to selenium, whatever it may be, all of these are intertwined into this giant web of metabolic processes and various vitamins need other vitamins to work together and overall, to not get too complicated in this video, by consuming Nutrient-dense foods, these vitamins occur naturally in the ratios you need in them, i.e. if you're eating nose to tail, that they put the human body in optimal health. So I don't want to go too much into detail. I guess I could touch on an example of like, like DHA, which can only be raised in blood levels by consuming high omega-3 foods, is varies in breast milk from 0.2% to 1.8%. So obviously a baby that is fed breast milk on 1.8% will have exponentially better development than one fed 0.2%. But all of these things are stuff that I can go into depth in other videos and just to kind of get you guys exploring and understanding what health is. So NutriFacts.org, Nutri-Facts.org. It talks about all the vitamins and all their functions, not to be confused with NutritionFacts.org, which is made by that ghoul, Dr. Greger. That is the opposite of what we want to look at. So I will link that. I will link some other videos where I talk about the difference between, you know, vitamin A and beta carotene. I will have videos talking about that. I have videos talking about, like, how we're afraid to be healthy, those preconceived notions. I have, uh, I'll link those in the comments. Uh, if you guys want to support me, uh, you know, share the channel. That's all I really ask. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you like the video. Um, if you want to, you can subscribe. You could go check out the video on my Patreon. Uh, check out me on Primal Edge Health. I'll be on the Carnivore Cast in a week or two. Uh, but uh, I guess we got to do the daily makeup check, right? I got a, got a towel this time. Probably trying my skin out, but no, no makeup, guys. Do not wear makeup. Um, Teeth, you know, hair, whatever. You know, I'm not. I don't have any products on my hair. It's just, I just wet it. I combed it. That was it. Please, guys, I'm gonna have to do this. I literally have to do this in every video now. And, and but at this point, like, I don't know if you guys are just messing with me or if, uh, because half the time you guys are messing with me, and then half the time it's actually people still think I'm wearing makeup because they didn't watch the whole video. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for uh, Frankie the Face is gonna make an appearance. Uh, he's gonna be very upset about. All you guys talking about how pretty he is.